All right, guys, welcome back. <clears throat> Today we're gonna have a little trip through history. So I've been looking at this product, Arch Oil, and I've kind of looked at the pros and the cons. And one of the things that someone tries to make a big negative out of it is that it's a detergent more than a friction modifier. I'll let you know what I think once I run it for a while. But the fact that it's a detergent is actually what made me buy it. I didn't buy it for the friction modifier. I bought, I bought it for the detergent. As you guys know, I own a few Toyotas. <clears throat> and Toyotas, they do have a history of having problems with the oil ring that goes... Let me see if I can do this. That goes right here. Okay. This one doesn't have it. I removed it. But anyway, the oil ring that goes right there, it gets sludged up. And then, you know, they, they start to burn oil. So the fact that everyone can agree that it's a detergent that washes out the the oil and all that is the main reason I bought it. I didn't buy it for the modifier, for the friction modifier. Um, you know, there's people that say it is, there's people that say they don't. The 6067, uh, 6473 diesel guys swear by this stuff, uh, but th there's a, a different situation. So let's, let's talk about what happened. So in the mid eighties, manufacturers were in a rush to um, be, be more compliant with emissions. So what they did is they changed the thickness of the rings. They made them smaller. They went to metric rings. I think everybody did. Ford was one of the first ones. You know, I gotta, I gotta really say this about Ford. They always tend to be ahead of the curve. For as much crap as they get, they do tend to be ahead of the curve. Or um, in the sense that they're ahead of the curve in mass production. They weren't the first ones to do fuel injection. I think Cadillac was in a mass production, but once they got into it, you know, they went to the SFI and then MFI, and you know, their their fuel systems, I think are pretty, pretty resilient, at least the early years when they first went into it. Um, you know, in the 80s, you know, Chrysler was running roller cams in their V8, but Ford was running them in their Mustang and all their five liters and Lincolns. Uh, anyway, I'm getting off track. But anyway, getting back to the story, you know, so I was there when all of this happened, right, with the with the pistons. Prior to 1985, you could get a cast aluminum piston or you could get a power forged piston or you could order a custom piston, but usually it was going to either be cast or forged. And so the manufacturers in their um, quest for more power lower emissions they developed the thinner oil rings which actually was ahead of its time because the oils that were out there were not capable of working with those rings and that's why we had a lot of um engines toyota was one, one of the worst ones that if the owner neglected to do regular uh, oil changes it would sludge up and then the rings would 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 stop working the oil ring and then they'd have to uh either warranty it or, you know, the customer would have to eat it. And it was their fault. Um, fast forward to now, the oils have been designed to accommodate more of the modern compression rings and oil rings, but they have removed zinc or lowered the amount of zinc in oil so much that it's uh, causing problems. Uh, case in point, anything having to do with cams, followers, uh, stuff like that. I always blame it on the lack of zinc. I don't care what nobody says. That's just my opinion, but I think it's a lack of zinc. So anyway, getting back to the piston. So around the 86, 85, we started seeing a brand new piston. It was called a hyper eutectic. And the hyper eutectic was a new uh, aluminum material that was lighter than cast aluminum. So anybody that knows anything about racing, the lighter the, lighter the rotating mass, the more power. But what they did do is they tightened up the piston to the wall clearance and we had some seizing in the early engines, uh, the very early engines that came out. So the way they fixed that is they actually went to coating the skirts with a, a graphite to help promote, uh, to help lessen friction because we were running the piston walls tighter than, than ever before. So once they got the, the piston came out, they, they were seizing, they put the, the coating on the pistons, 
again, the race guys know about all this stuff. And then they, some of them got treated on the top and that helped a lot. But the main thing was you were lowering, lowering the rotating mass weight, which improved your um, performance. And that's to this day, you know, you, if you look at the pistons from today compared to a piston out of a car from the 70s, which now you can't even find a car from the 70s in the junkyards. They're all, they're being crushed the minute they get on the yard. Uh, that, that's a whole different video. I don't know if I'll ever talk about that. But anyway, so getting back to Arch Oil, the reason I got that oil is because I want to be sure that these, that the oil ring, which it's two rails and an expander, get cleaned um and i'm gonna try it see how it goes i put uh, some of it in in both my blue uh chevy malibu and then the scion got a got a got a dose too but the arch oil um the thing about it is it's it it there's too many people saying too many good things about it especially in the diesel world that it's got to have some truth to the friction stuff but really what i care about is the cleaning product anyway a uh, little trip through time and stuff i seen and come and go oh the other thing before i forget this is important the other thing that started messing up the oil rings was one they went to thinner rings two people weren't educated enough to know that you needed to do your oil change every you know, at least every 5,000, but preferably every 3,000. But the, what really was the X factor in the oil ring failures, which was really not their fault. It was just they were ahead of their time. And education was not there. Is that a lot of these engines after 87 went injected. And as soon as they went injected, they started running hotter temperatures. They started running 205, 207. And I remember when I worked in the garage, people would pull in all the time. They'd be like, man, my, my car is over, my car is over 190. Uh, I want you to put a thermostat in it. I want you to put a 160 degree thermostat. Well, guess what? Uh, the ECM is looking for a certain temperature for everything to start working. So anyway, that's a whole can of worms I don't even want to open. But with the uh, operating temperature of the, of the modern, of the, the modern mass engines that came out after 87 tbis mfi sfi i don't care who you're talking about i don't care if it's chrysler ford chevy dodge toyota whoever the problem was they increased the 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 temperatures one to try to help uh promote emissions lower emissions and a lot of people uh the oils again were not up for the task in my opinion because they were sludging up uh i know one of the most uh, very popular car at the time was the ford escort 1.1.6 1.9 and they had an sfi mfi cfi version and those little cars um were actually very good cars in my opinion it's just that no one uh for lack of education could not keep them um, maintained properly and that's why they broke um, the aluminum head I know they all cracked you know and and we weren't used to seeing cracks in heads and then a few years after they came out with the one nine uh, they started putting out a bulletin that as long as it wasn't leaking water you could just let it run you'd peen the crack shut and you could keep running the, the, the engine and those little cars actually were economical they were cheap and uh, most of them went over 100,000, almost every one I ever saw. But the thing was, when they, when they went over 100,000, by the time it was said and done, they were ready for the junk heap because people just bought them and rode, drove the wheels off of them. Anyway, um, just something different. And like I said, Arch Oil, the reason I got it was because everyone, everyone agrees Hate it or love it, it is a super good cleaner, and that's what I'm shooting for with my pistons to get cleaned out. And the friction modifier, well, we'll just have to wait and see what that works out like. Hey, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.